Assalamu alaikum. We are discussing about the first week of the fertilization. In my last lecture, I told you about the fertilization, its phases and the outcome of the fertilization, which is also known as the results of the fertilization. Before studying this lecture, you should uh, undergo the thorough reading of the last lecture. So now I will tell you the remaining stages after the fertilization. When the zygote is formed, then 30 hours after fertilization, after 30 hours of fertilization, a process of mitotic linear starts, which is known as the cleavage. Firstly, the zygote is in the two cell stage, then four cell, cell stage, and as the time passes, the blastomeres or the small cells are mitotically dividing. The space is limited, but the cells become smaller and smaller to occupy the limited space. This is process is known as the compaction. And now, when these blastomeres come to the stage of 16 to 32 cell stage, 16 to 32 cell stage, at that time, we call it as the morula. This one is the morula. And after the morula, these, these cells, blastomeres, will arrange itself as now the morula will enter into the uterine cavity. This is the structure of the uterus, this is the fundus and the body, and this one is the uterine tube. So now, after fertilization, which occurs in the ampulla of the uterine tube, now the morula will enter into the uterine cavity. And as it enters almost third to fourth day of uh, fertilize after fertilization, it will enter into the uterine cavity. And now when it is in the uterine cavity, then the fluid from the uterine cavity begin to enter into the morula. That is why now the cells will rearrange itself into the inner cell mass. These are the inner cell mass cells, inner cell mass and these are the outer cell mass, outer cell mass. So as the fluid is seeping here, the cavity which is formed now is known as the blasto seal. This one is the blasto seal and the blasto layers are now arranged as the inner cell mass and the outer cell mass. At this stage, the morula is known as the blastocyst. Blastocyst. Okay, now this is the blastocyst. After that, what will happen? This inner cell mass, which is also known as the embryoblast. This is also known as the embryoblast. Why it is known as the embryoblast? Because it forms the embryo proper. And the outer cell mass is also known as the trophoblast because this is important for the nourishment of the embryo. Troph means nutrition. And this trophoblast is later on divided into two layers. An outer layer which is known as the syncytiotrophoblast which is the multinucleated layer multinucleated layer and the second layer is the cytotrophoblast which is the mononucleated layer of almost cuboidal cells. So the trophoblast which is the outer cell mass is divided into the two further layers in trophoblast and the cytotrophoblast. Syncytiotrophoblasts are the multinucleated cells, while the cytotrophoblasts are the mononucleated cells. Now, what will happen when after the cleavage phase, morula, and the blastocyst stage, now comes the process of implantation, which is very important. Implantation. Firstly, you should know what is the implantation. Implantation is mainly the impregnation or implantation of the blastocyst into the posterior wall of the body of the uterus. So, what is implantation? Implantation is the penetration or impregnation of blastocyst into the 
posterior wall of body of the uterus and when it occurs it starts at the end of first week and this process of implantation completes at the end of the second week of gestation period so now i told you about the definition of the implantation which is the penetration of the blastocyst in the posterior wall of the body of the uterus and it starts at the end of the first week and culminates or the, uh, this process finished at the end of the second week now what will happen for the implantation to occur for the implantation to occur this blastocyst must undergo a degeneration of the zona pellucida zona pellucida shedding is very important for the implantation process as the zona pellucida will shed from the blastocyst and the blastocyst then called as the late blastocyst or the mature blastocyst then they will the implantation will be completed and for that the syncytiotrophoblast cells which i can draw here for you as i told you that the syncytiotrophoblast are the outer multinucleated cells here are the syncytiotrophoblast this one they will penetrate the endometrium okay this one is the endometrium where there are different blood vessels are also present this is the syncytiotrophoblast and this is the cytotrophoblast which is the mononucleated layer now this syncytiotrophoblast will penetrate the endometrium and the blood vessels will penetrate or rupture from the uterine endometrium and it will enter this blood will enter into the lacunae of the syncytiotrophoblast so that is why uteroplacental circulation will develop because now blood loaded lacunae are present in the syncytiotrophoblast also here another process occurred which is the penetration of the cytotrophoblast into the syncytiotrophoblast to form the primary chorionic villi primary chorionic villi which are nothing just the layer of cytotrophoblast which are the single layer of cells mononucleated cells which are covered by the multinucleated layer of the syncytiotrophoblast so now at the end of the first week the primary chorionic villi are also formed zona pellucida sheds primary chorionic villi are formed but blood filled lacunae like are formed primary uteroplacental circulation is developed in this way the process of implantation completed but there are few questions which are asked, asked about the implantation what are the abnormal sites of the implantation which are known you can say as the ectopic pregnancy the normal site of the implantation as i told you about the posterior wall of the body of the uterus but what is the ectopic pregnancy this is also asked if the implantation occurs site other than the posterior wall of the body of the uterus then this is known as the ectopic pregnancy and what are the different sites of the ectopic pregnancy then implantation can occur at ovaries then it can be tubal pregnancy means if the implantation of blastocyst occur at any site of the uterine tube in the ampulla in the isthmus then this is known as a tubal pregnancy and this is the most common 95% pregnancies of ectopic pregnancies occur in, at the tubal pregnancy level and then it can be in the abdominal cavity in the abdomen implantation also occurs then we have the placenta previa 
what is placenta previa we have the internal os if the implantation occur at the internal os level then the placenta previa is formed so these are the few types of the ectopic pregnancy in which the most common is the tubal pregnancy which occurs in the any part isthmus or ampulla of the uterine tube and this is diagnosed very early i hope you understand the implantation till next lecture allah bless you